heavily brewing today in in some media and stuff. It's <clears throat> Harry Kane. It's came out to say that uh, I don't know where the information is coming from. I have certain different information that Ten Hag is going all in for Harry Kane in this summer. X Y Z. Um, I even have spoken to uh, yeah, some transfer journalists. We're going to play a clip regarding that as well. That we did a interview a few weeks back ago. I mean, clearly, clearly, like you know, he he signed the contract with the devil a few years ago uh, with with Levy. And barring that, the sector manager Conte right now. I mean, the valuation according to transfer market is about ninety millions. He's got like you know one year left on his contract. British tax turning thirty. This, according to me, it's um, he's a good signing. He's a he's a good signing. But for me, I I can debate. He's not a world class striker. He's good within the Premier League. He does does all right on the Southgate. But I don't think if this is the future that we need, barring if we're looking at if comparing an Osman to Kane in terms of long term sustainability, guys. Let me know your thoughts and feelings regarding this. People in the chat, also drop your, your comments regarding Kate or Osman. Yeah, we've got quite... A, just before we move on to back to the panel, sorry, we've got a few quite a few comments building up in the chat, so it'd just be right just Please. to uh, men mention a few of those. So, obviously, Matt just says earlier on, welcome, uh, welcome lads, uh, Anil uh, Kandola. Um, and then we've got... Um, We've got uh, somebody saying it depends if we get Champions League or not, um, whether it'll be uh, Ivan Tony. I, I think Good Ivan show. Tony's a fantastic player, and uh, whether whether yeah. we get Champions League or not, I'd love to. Well, we haven't. Um, just to clarify, the, the, the players that I have here is that we're the players that we've been linked on, solid linked and rumors yeah. from agents and the club. I haven't heard anything from Ivan Tony unless you have Anil. Uh, no, I think just quit very quickly on Ivan Tony. He's almost in between Osman and Ferguson in terms of them them signings and what yeah. they do for Man United. Um, he would be a brilliant signing. I think he he has got certainly a, a a bit of credit in the bank, really, in terms of deserving a move. No disrespect to Brentford, but I think he does certainly deserve a a big move. And obviously, he has got his difficulties off the pitch with the 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 the, the betting stuff. So I think it will be certainly something that he has to sort out in terms of his own personal life before we can discuss him. But yeah, I think. You know, Ivan Tony is a solid player, but realistically, if we're talking about the likes of Harry Kane and Victor Osman, he isn't at that level. If we're being perfectly honest, yep. big up, big up. Um, okay, um, Kane. Anyone? Any thoughts on Kane? Do you think he's worth the ninety million? Uh, we know that Daniel Levy is a tough customer. He will not sell him to a rival club. I don't think so. So uh, yeah, I just I just want to sorry, sorry, on, Phil, sorry to no, go across you, mate, but uh, I, I think I want to go on a little bit of a rant about Harry Kane, to be honest. Go for um, it. So I think that, that obviously the situation for Manchester United and the striker saga, if you like, who are Man United going to sign? The two big names that we've been hearing are Harry Kane and Victor Osman. And now, if you're someone who thinks Harry Kane should sign because of his playing ability, or he would suit Eric Ten Hag more than Victor Osman, I, I, I don't agree with that. But if if that's what you think, and that's your agenda and that's perfectly fine but one thing I really will not stand for is this we should sign Harry Kane over Victor Osman because of his Premier League experience that yes, is absolute exactly. nonsense exactly. just ask yes. Erling Haaland just ask Sergio Aguero just ask Casemiro and just ask Martinez yeah. on all of their Premier League experience before they came to the league how did they all do and how are they all getting on I wonder how and if you want to stay on the same note why don't we look at Fernando Torres from Liverpool to Chelsea Alexis Sanchez from Arsenal to Manchester United and Romelu Lukaku who's been at Manchester United and Chelsea all Premier League experience don't remember them doing very well at any of the clubs that they join. So I think this this situation between Harry Kane and Victor Osman, if you feel like Harry Kane would bring more than Victor Osman, then that's fine if you're talking about his playing ability. But one thing I just simply will not stand for is this Premier League experience. It's absolute nonsense. And if you want to even go to the managers, Carlo Ancelotti and Antonio Conte, when they first came to the Premier League, how many, how many games experience did they have? Zero, and they still went on to win the Premier League title. So this 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 absolute nonsensical idea that Harry Kane should be signed because of his Premier League experience for me is absolute garbage. And I think if that's the the one reason and the only thing that you can have to sort of separate him and Osman, then realistically it's clutching at straws. If we're being perfectly honest, I know with Harry Kane he wants the Premier League record, he wants this idea of winning the Premier League title at the biggest club in the country as well as getting the all time top goal scorer record. But this isn't a dream. This isn't a fantasy. We're Manchester United Football Club and we need to get back where we want to be. And two, three years down the line, we're going to be in the same predicament of signing another striker. Why miss out on someone like Victor Osman when he's got the world at his feet? And realistically, 
he could take Man United to the next level for the next six, seven years. If Kane is playing at the top of his ability, can he do it for six, seven years? I think we all know the answer to that one. Yeah, big up, uh, Neil. And, and, and I think it's also media driven, uh, driven by a certain sense that British press is kind of pushing the hurricane agenda to Manchester United. But I think if we signed Hurricane three years ago, there will be a different prospect than today. He's pushing 30. For me, I'm looking more of the long term sustainability. Um, Jay, what's your thoughts and feelings regarding? Okay, I love how Anil uh, there brought brought the heat and called out the British media that yeah, big up propagating <laughs> this myth about Harry Kane for the last couple of years. Um, he's won nothing as a pro. It's a case of um, Harry, show me medal, son. He won nothing. Um, he has the England goal scoring record. Again, that's been stat padded by scoring goals against such luminaries as. Um, San Marino and Gibraltar. When did Harry Kane do it for England at a big tournament? And he, I, I think, in, 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 the, in the Euros against Italy in the, the final game, I thought Harry Kane was quite poor in that game for me. So the English media, obviously, with jingoism, they're always going to protect their own and whatever it is. What it is, what it is. Uh, to throw ninety million at Harry Kane, turn of thirty, you get two years from him. And it seems every second season, Harry Kane does get an ankle injury. Uh, next point I want to raise, looking at Harry Kane the last two seasons, he, he he's dropped deeper and deeper between, to, say, the 12-yard box and almost the halfway line. That seems to be his, his zone. So I think a Harry Kane in the United side would actually literally be tripping on Bruno's toes because for me, they operate at very similar positions. It's now, a great point. It's a great Harry point. Kane, you know, phenomenal striker. He's he is a phenomenal striker. He's an elite striker. But I don't I, I don't class Harry Kane as a world class striker. Look back in the hands of strikers the last five years. Um, obviously, look, Ronaldo speaks for himself. Um, Ibra, I'm a big fan of. You put maybe Harry Kane as a tier two striker, elite but not world class. And 90 million at turn of 30. And Diane Levy, we all know, um, a, a slippery eel when it comes to negotiation. <laughs> Do you think for one second um, Richard Arnold has the, the negotiation now to sit down and trash out a deal with someone like Diane Levy? Not a chance. I wouldn't touch Harry Kane personally. But uh, three years ago, yeah, Harry Kane, by all means, but not now. That's exactly what I said three years ago, and you absolutely spot on. <sighs> Danny Levy, even if it's one year down the contract, he will squeeze out as much money as he can. Um, fine. Um, where will, do we put? Did Did you say you say Phil or no, mate? No, no. But uh, to be honest, I had this big speech ready, and Anil took half of it, and Jay took the other half. So um... <laughs> sorry, man. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, mate. No, I was like, well, yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah, I can just say, yeah, I agree with the guys, you know, well done, good preparation, Phil. But no, absolutely, I was I was going to say about the fact that Kane has been dropping a lot deeper, whether that's because to uh, suit the style of, of Spurs, because they've not had it in the midfield, they're not getting it, he's winning the ball. He's Obviously, the, the one-two um, that he was making with Son last season it was absolutely phenomenal, being compared as two of the best uh, in, in world football at the time because of the uh, goal... Um, Results between them, um, statistics between them, goals and assists. But what we cannot take away is the fact that Harry Kane is a phenomenal striker. He's a phenomenal finisher of the ball, or goal scorer, I should say. He's a phenomenal goal scorer. You know, he's been consistent for many years. Even this season, when Spurs are having a really poor season, he's had 39 appearances, 23 goals, four assists. He's, he's doing it season in, season out, always on the tip of the golden boot. He would be phenomenal at Man United for a season. He reminds me at this moment, this this sort of signing is very much the Van Persie from Van Arsenal. Persie. Yep. He's not, he's not yep. won it. He's going to make the move to the big club to take the trophy in the end or take the chance of the trophy in the end. The difference being is Arsenal let Van Persie go for 25 million, 24 and a half million. Daniel Levy has already been touched on. Is no way going to let him go for anything less than 80, 90 million. Um, 
and, and whether they're going to get that for a 30 year old, someone who wants to, to get the goals, maybe if we do get awesome, then maybe PSG will go for Kane or something like that. You don't know. Um, someone who, because he'll, he'll have all the runners around him and he's just going to be in there to finish it with a bit of height and, and uh, can score all different types of goals. He is a fantastic striker. He would be amazing at United, but not for 90 million, not for me. Uh-huh. Um, 25 million, same like we got Robin Van Persie. Absolutely. You, you'd, you'd have to, you'd be stupid not to consider it for a season. But when we're talking a rebuilding for the future, it's got to, it, not, not Harry Kane for me. One swallow doesn't make a summer is what we say. We, we are not looking for one season. Yeah, if it's, that's what I said. I think Harry Kane is a fantastic striker, but I don't see him as a game changer. Somebody can grab this ball by the scruff of the neck and just, uh, you know, be a game changer. Um, I've seen him like, you know, drifting off in, in the beginning of the season. He went on a drought. Didn't seem okay. But of course, in, in a Spurs side with Conte scoring like how many? 21 goals in, in the season in all competitions. Not too bad. But for me, it's it's nothing in terms of longevity. The way I see it is a longevity. If you want to have short, short-term short gains, yeah, maybe one, two, three years, uh, Harry Kane would be a striker. But what will happen with Kane after 33 years? We don't know in terms of his injury record and stuff like that. Hell, we even seen Zlatan Ibrahimovic playing to 41. So, yeah, we, we see. Uh, guys, in terms of your voting, um, where would you place him in on the harder meter? I, th- I think we're, we're going to have to split the numbers a little bit. I'd probably put him at around 3.5. I think like, yeah. like, like we've, we've all alluded mm. to, you know, he would be absolutely brilliant for a season, even two seasons, but realistically long-term, if you want to be hitting the four or five in terms of the, the, the ratings that we're going to give him, he's got to have more than just a couple of seasons. So I'm going to probably go about three and a half for him. Three and a half. Yeah. I agree. Three and a half. I think, I think that's the first statement. He, you know, we've put Osman as a five, as, as certainly as our hot favourites. We've said that you know Kane could do it, but in terms of whether we want him, whether we want him here for the money at his age, I know people say, "Oh, age doesn't come into it," but actually it does because this it money, is. when we're trying to rebuild, it's so important. And some of the Scott's just very quickly, some of the Scott Madison's pointed out on one of his comments. Uh, I personally take Kane, but it seems like a nightmare deal to make, as we've already said. Levy, Levy would drag, drag it out all summer. We can't afford yeah. another De Jong saga. Absolutely. It's not something that's going to be like, yeah, beginning of transfer window. Okay, we agreed 90 million for Kane. Job done. Not at all. If we offered 90 million up front, he wouldn't take it. He'd push for 120. That's the way Levy plays. And, and we'd lose. We saw we actually saw Bellingham leave to uh, Dortmund while we were fighting for Sancho. Um, and we never got Sancho that window. And Bellingham went for 25 million to, uh, to Dortmund from from Birmingham. So we, we've, we've been, we've had been in this situation too many times before, even going back to Moisey, uh, when we ended up with flipping, um, Fellaini, <laughs> see, I remembered him, <laughs> uh, you know, when we ended up with Fellaini, we, we even overpaid for him. His, his release clause had run out two days before and we still paid it over a bit because we were dragged out with all these, or oh, oh, you might be able to get him, you might be able to get him. There was rumours of, of Bale and uh, Fabregas and all that. And we were, his head was turned and he was too excited by the, the potential of it. And I just think we've got to get him. We've got to know exactly who our targets are and not be messed around, not have the Frankie de Jong situation again. Uh, oh, true. We'll make it clear. We're in, we're out. This is our season. Get on with pre-season. Right. We're going to see what the, uh, the um, global fan base on the socials has been voted as well later on. But yeah, I agree with you. Uh, is everyone agreeing on 3.5? Yeah. Yep. Right. There's a lot of comments coming in. Uh, United shouldn't go in for the Kane road. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. The Premier League proven. People are supporting your rant. I absolutely agree. There's a lot of people agreeing, basically. Jay, ha, ha, ha. Scott Manderson saying, cool, cool, cool. But guys, I, I just also want to do, do a, a short clip because a few weeks ago, we had uh, Nar James and uh, Jody from MUC Realist TV. They had a conversation with 90 Minutes. Um, we had a conversation with Graham Bailey. No, no other than that. So I'm just going to play the script what Graham Bailey is reckoned because he's obviously speaking to the club regarding the striker targets and stuff like that. So let me just play this clip. I think for right now, till the end of the season, he does, but. I think you've got you've got to look in the summer where we're at. I mean, there's so many variables right now at Manchester United. Um, do we have new owners? Are the Glazers still going to be there? There's so many variables on that that it basically it changes everything. Come come end of March when the sale, according to the rainbow, finally does happen, it changes everything to what number nine could come in. 
which is where I think I want to get, would love to get Graham's thoughts on on who he he thinks will yeah. come in. I mean, we've been linked to Kane many times, as you know, Graham. Mm -hmm. And is it still a possibility? Are we still interested in Kane? Or is he looking like he will stay at Tottenham? No, I'm just going to pause here right now because today most of the media outlets and you know fan channels were reporting that Kane is the number one target from Eric Ten Hag. But listen to what Graham has to say. He, he's obviously a player that does interest United. It's obviously, the chances of Daniel Levy selling to Manchester United are very, very low. He doesn't want to sell Harry Kane to a rival, particularly Manchester United. There's been a lot of to and throwing between those two clubs over the years. So, and and obviously uh, these big deals will be under a new new stewardship at United. We expect new owners to be in before July first, um, even June when they start the planning. So we're expecting that. But and and money will be available to Eric High. But is is Harry Kane the one? I'm 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 not hundred percent convinced. Um, I do know the obviously there's a lot of players that like they've looked at Ossiman. Um I think Dusan Vlavic is one to watch. I think he'll be available for a lot less than what Harry Kane would be. I think he's younger. He's he's obviously without the United being Champions League. I think he's open to a move to England, so he's one I keep an eye on. Um so Benjamin Sesko, you know, we know he's going to he's due to he's due to arrive at Leipzig, but United Scouts love this guy. They like him a lot. Leipzig could double their money without him coming in, and then does that open up the avenue to other parts of the squad? I, I I still think if 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 they had the money there, I still think Frankie De Jong will be Ten Hag's main number one target if he's available. I think he probably will be. So if they're going to spend that, and it's not that they can't, they couldn't spend 100 million in every area, but obviously yeah, financial fair play does does prevent you from doing that. So I would think maybe you know. De Jong and another might be the case. Kane, yeah, he ticks our boxes, but what, he's 29th, turns 30 this summer, doesn't he? Yeah, in June. June long, term, long term, I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced. I think Harry Kane might move, you know, but by Munich, like him a lot. Um, does he go there for two or three years? Guaranteed silverware. And, and then come back, you know, a move to United for Kane, does that guarantee silverware? It looks like it might get him silverware, but I don't think it guarantees it. And so I think you just have to consider that option as well. So no, but I do think a new number nine is is vital um, for the way they play. I'm not sure. Yeah, one in Veg in Veghorst Mold is the way to go. But I don't think someone like a Kane or a Vlaovic, even the Sesko, is like that really. Or Veghorst, he's good at what he does, but he's very limited. And unless you firing cross in the box, as we saw when you played inverted wingers, that isn't always the case. But you know he. Um, he distracted the defenders yesterday, Alan Road. He did what he had to do. But no, I don't think a carbon copy of that will be what we see um, in the summer. But I do expect, I do expect an, um, a new number nine to be through the door for eight and a half. There we have it. <laughs> so that's pretty much echoing what we are all saying, you know. And we, we, we spoke to him, uh, it was about two weeks ago, to be honest. And this is kind of fresh. And it's a valid point what he's saying, that Harry Kane, if he wants to win silverware, which probably wants, that's Harry Kane's dream. We we know that the Bayern Munich is interesting in new striker. He would be a perfect. And Daniel Levy don't want to sell to a rival club. So that makes sense, guys. <laughs> yeah, completely, completely agree. Absolutely. I think we were all on yeah. We're all nodding and saying, yeah, we agree. Exactly. Yeah, we I think you can tell by my, my facial expressions, we're all in agreement there. And I think yeah. it, it does actually remind me a little bit of moments ago where Jay referred to uh, Daniel Levy as a slippery eel. Uh, when, when he was starting that sentence, I was a little bit worried about what he was going to say. But I think slippery eel is, is, is quite acceptable in terms of what you could potentially describe Daniel Levy as if, when it comes to these transfers. Trust but, yeah, me, that's always Daniel, be I've said 10 times worse than Irish radio. Got away with it. <laughs> Ten times worse. <laughs> Which I was half expected, to be honest. But yeah, you know, <laughs> joke, joke, jokes aside, I think there's so many stumbling blocks and so many questions where I was almost feel if you put the money down for Osman, realistically, there's not going to be anything about the age or any potential parties on Napoli side so preventing if obviously you put the money down. And I hate to keep comparing it back to Osman, but realistically, this is the target that Man United fans want. So why shouldn't we use this as a as a as a yardstick if if yep. you like? 
So, yeah, I think uh, it's certainly a situation. And the Bayern Munich stuff is quite interesting as well. It is actually something that I've heard over the last week or so. And one thing to remember is Thomas Tuchel is now at Bayern Munich. And he's mm. obviously got the Premier League experience. He knows firsthand how good Harry Kane is. So if that situation does come about, don't be surprised if that Premier League link comes about and, and Harry really? Kane does move to Germany. Yeah. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching MUFC Realist TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on the socials.